My name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about A Doll's House written by Henry Gibson. Now, this novel is very interesting. I think it says a lot about um, women and how they can be oppressed um, within a marriage. Um, before I go into the summary of this novel, please remember to subscribe, like, or leave a comment at the end of the video. So, <clears throat> the novel begins with our introduction to two people, uh, Nora and her husband Torvald. Now what we learn first of all from this um, play is that Nora is completely subordinate to Torvald and you know he is the provider, he's the breadwinner. Um, everything that Nora owns Torvald is the one buying. She has to ask for money, she has to ask for everything that she has. So she doesn't have an income, she doesn't have a job, she's just um, a beautiful woman, that's Torvald's wife, and basically her job is to stay beautiful and to stay his wife. Um, so, in many ways, she doesn't have an identity of her own. We learned that in the past, her father died, and before her father died, um, she gets married. So, she just bas basically gets transferred from one man to another. So, she never has the ability or, or the chance to develop a mind of her own or an independence of her own. It's always been the men in her life um, directing the course of her life. So, really, the first few scenes within this play, we, we just understand that Nora is a doll. She, she's pampered. She doesn't even take care of her own children. Um, the nurse, Anne, is the one taking care of the children. Um, she only plays with her children as if... Um, you know, she was just playing with them, not really as a mother, but just as someone who stopped by to play with them. Um, and she's just taking care of her own business. So she doesn't take care of her children. She doesn't clean the house. They have a maid. Um, she's just, a, a, you know, a doll, a beautiful woman that has nice clothes and she makes her husband happy. Um, so really, from the human perspective, she doesn't have an identity. She doesn't have, she's not a human being. She's just... A doll, right? That's what we're made to believe um, from the first scenes, um, and and really that's quite damning for her as a woman. Um, and even though that's what we see throughout the first scenes, that's not really what's going on underneath the surface. Underneath the surface, um, Nora is um, a, a whole different person. Uh, Nora has saved her marriage and her husband Torvald. He just doesn't know about it. What we learned is that um, before Nora's father passed away, um, they were in a moment where financially they were not in a good place. And Torvald never wanted to take out loans um, from the bank, but Nora, she decides to do this, right? Um, but what we learned is that within the play, women cannot take out loans from the bank. So what Nora does, she forges her father's signature before she, um, he dies um, and he gets a loan that saves her and her husband's life. Now her husband doesn't know about her husband doesn't know about this. Um, she forged the signature and she works with a person by the name of Croxted. Uh, he works at the bank and they work through papers and she forges um, the, her father's signature to get the loan. So they move. And their life is going well. Um, at the time she forged the signature, we know that her husband was very sick. And it's the only way she could save her husband. Um, and her husband now, at the present time, when, we are, when you start the novel, um, the husband is doing much better. He has a job at the bank, and he's been promoted to big manager. And Croxted, who works at the bank, um, you know, he has a bad reputation. We learned that... Uh, he's been involved in, in through like he's been through some scandalous behaviors, um, and his reputation is not as clean as it's supposed to be. And so, Torvald wanted to get rid of Croxted, um, and Croxted really doesn't want to leave because if he gets fired from this bank position, his his reputation is is just ruined, and he'll never have a chance to to fix it, um, and he'll be basically in poverty because that that's his livelihood. That's what he's been working for his entire life. So Croxted figures out within the play that Nora did forge a signature. 
So he starts um, he starts blackmailing Nora to say that if you don't help me stay in my position at the bank, I'm going to show your husband this and bring you to court and ruin your life, basically. Another character that's, that comes within um, the, not, the, the play sorry, um, is uh, a woman by the name of Mrs. Lend. Mrs. Lend is a woman, she's very proud um, of her life. Um, she took care of her brothers um, when her family was going through some tough times. Um, um, her mother was a sick woman. She took care of her. Um, and Mrs. Lend, we know that um, she's a very proud, she's very, um, a woman who, who's proud of herself because she's took, she's taking care of her family um, when they were down on their luck. But at this time in the play, we learned that her brothers, that um, when they were little, she had to take care of them. But at this time in the play, we learned that they've grown up and now they can take care of themselves. They can work for themselves. And her mother is no longer alive. So Mrs. Lind, she's an independent woman now, but she's looking for a job and she can't find one. So she comes to Nora and she asks Nora to, to ask to her vault to find a job for her at the bank. Um, and, and this is quite interesting because within this play, everybody puts Nora down. Everybody tells Nora that she's just a child. She doesn't really understand the world and understand how the world works. Um, but in fact, Nora does kind of and sort of understand how the world works because she saved her husband in a way that um, nobody thought she she would ever do. So Mrs. Lynn, she kind of like, um, what she does is when Nora is speaking to her um, and telling her she's going to talk to her husband um, and telling her that she kind of understands, Mrs. Lynn says, no, you don't understand. You're just a child. Um, you don't recognize or understand the, the, the things that adults have to go through in the real world. And this really offends Nora. And she reveals to Mrs. Lind what she did with the forged signature. Um, and so the play goes on. And, you know, it, it, this, this lie um, that, is, that is festering is really damning to Nora. Um, because her husband, Torvald, um, he is a man of morality. He is a man who, who wants to do things the right way. He doesn't want to tarnish his name. He doesn't want to take out bank loans uh, because he doesn't want to be in debt. He's a man of, of, of high caliber. He sets himself to be a man of high caliber. And he doesn't want his name to be tarnished. Um, so he doesn't know what his wife has done um, because forging a signature is, is a big deal. It's a big crime. And he doesn't know. Um, so in his mind, he's going to, to fire Croxted. Uh, but he doesn't know what deal his wife and Croxted um, have between um, each other. Um, so it's killing Nora because, you know, it's your husband doesn't like people who lie, people who cheat, people who forge signatures. And here you are doing the same thing, um, the, the, the things that he hates, of course. Um, so Croxted blackmails Nora um, and... and you know, he's continually saying, you have to save my job. You have to save my job. Um, and Nora talks to Torvald. Torvald does not want to give or, or keep Croxted, um, Croxted um, at the bank. He thinks he's a thief. He thinks he's a, he's a liar. He's deceitful. So Torvald just wants to fire Croxted. Um, another, another character that's very important within this novel is Dr. Rank. Dr. Rank is an interesting character. Um, he, he loves Nora, uh, but Nora doesn't want anything to do with him. Um, in, the, in the play, we learn that he is um, dying and he leaves a, a, a note with a cross on it um, in the mail to tell Laura, uh, Nora um, that he is dying. Um, he does declare his love to Nora, um, but Nora rejects him. Of course, she's a married woman um, and she didn't want anything to do with Dr. Rank. Um <clears throat> So that, that's really Dr. Rank. Uh, he's an interesting character. Um, and, and the thing is, like, he's important in the sense that you, you kind of see where Nora um, is, is how she's viewed at. She's, views, she's viewed as a prize, right? Uh, her father, Torvald, Dr. Rank, um, and, 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 of course, Croxted. All the men in her life have used her um, to get something that they want. Um, her father 
saw her as, um, you know, his child. And, and she pretended to like everything that he liked um, so that he could be happy, right? So she bended for the men in her life. Um, and, and really, at many times, her views, her points of views were never heard. After her father, her husband Torvald is basically the captain of her life. Everything that she does, he's in charge of. You know, he, he decides um, where they're going to go for, for an evening out. Um, he gives her money for how she should dress and how she should look and how she should behave. Um, everything that she does is managed by the men in her life. Um, Dr. Rank, you know, again, with Dr. Rank, she's seen as a, a prize, as a trophy. Um, none of these men see her as human beings. And that's what's quite sad. Um, because she doesn't have a voice of her own. None of these men know her true opinions about the world, about, um, you know, in, in s uh, many ways, what we see in, in this play is Torvald basically denouncing Nora because she's a woman, right? Um, because she's a woman, Torvald, you know, he says she doesn't understand anything, she doesn't know anything, um, and, and she can't be trusted to take on real tasks because she's a woman. So it's very oppressing. It's very, um, it's very sad the way that the men in this uh, play or the men of the past, they saw women as their either trophies or housewives or um, something to put on your arm rather than a human being. And Nora slowly figures out this because Croxted is blackmailing her so that he can get power. Um, Torvald has her on her arm because she's a beauty and you know she can he can have she can have he can have a woman on her arm to, to show around to other people that he has this beautiful life and wonderful life um, at the end of the play he even says um, he says this line that um, he's going to keep her around um, for appearances what does that mean right um, so all of the men in her life who have been in her life have always used her um, for their own means, for their own purposes, to advance themselves, to make themselves look better, to, to pleasure themselves, or if, to just have a beautiful woman by their side. Um, they never um, acknowledged her as a human being that could think, that could have thoughts, and that could make rational decisions. Um, so that says a lot about um, the human condition and, and just basically humans in general and how we used to, to basically oppress half of our, or at this point, even more, the, you know, the, the, the more of our entire race, right? Because um, we have more women on this planet than men. So um, it's quite sad how this, this takes place. Now, continuing the novel, uh, the play, what we see is, um, we see Croxted, um, he gets a little impatient. Um, he gets the letter that he's been fired and that Torvald has fired him from the bank. And, and you know, he, at first, he was going to go to um, court um, and, and present this forged document and show that Nora and both her, her and her husband are, are deceivers and that they're not who they say that they are. And Mrs. Lind, Nora sends Mrs. Lind um, to speak to Croxted what we learned is that Croxted and, and Mrs. Lynn have a past together. Uh, they wanted to be in a relationship, but they um, they couldn't because Croxted um, didn't have the necessary funds to support a family. Uh, so Mrs. Lynn, um, she got with another man who was financially set um, so that, of course, she could take care of her family, her mom, and her young brothers. But she points out to Croxted at this point that they're both single, you know, that they can finally be together. Um, she does tell Croxted um, to allow um, the letter that he sent to um, Torvald. He says, let them see the letter. Let Torvald read the letter. So the, the, the nasty um, existence of this lie that exists between Torvald and his wife can be revealed and they can move on past this. Um, so Torvald reads the letter. And the night that he reads it, um, he's really mad. He says to Nora, Nora, at this point, she is, she's very just, she's unnerved. She's not happy. She's just, 
she's just in a place that's just not healthy because she she's realized what she's done. She's realized that she's broken the law. She knows that her husband's not gonna be happy with her. Um, she knows that she can lose her family. She can go possibly to to jail or prison. Uh, she knows that her kids. She might have to leave her kids. There's a lot of things that it's it's basically the um, demolition of their their family that could um, be taken here. Um, and to have Walt read the letter, he's enraged. At first, um, he, he he says they're going to deal with it. They're going to find a way um, to, to deal with this. Um, but then, right before anything happens, another letter shows up. And um, Crockstead sends the, the another letter saying that he's forgiven Nora um, and that he's not going to go to court. And Torvald's really happy at this point. He takes both letters. He takes the 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 you know all the evidence. He throws into the fire, and he just all of his anger is gone. He says to Nora, "I'm happy now. Uh, you don't have to be. I'm not mad at you anymore. Uh, we can go back to what we what we were, right?" And um, it it this is what's really interesting within the novel. This is where Nora kind of like. She she just changes, right? Um, she used to be this submissive woman that listened to everything that her husband had to say, but this is where she changes. Um, she realizes that she is just a toy, right? She is just a, a doll in, in Torvald's life, right? A, a toy that is used for a purpose. You know? She's been used to make kids for Torvald, She's been used as a prize, as a woman um, to have on his arm. He even mentions, Torvald even mentions, um, there's a night within this play where they come from a dance. And Torvald says, you know, I, I let her dance, uh, but I didn't let her dance too much. So she didn't ruin our reputation. So to Torvald, everything is about reputation, reputation, reputation. Um, what... Nora recognizes that Torvald doesn't really um, love her. He loves the idea of being with her, right? He loves the the prestige that being with a woman um, brings to him. Um, and or Nora says, "I'm going to leave you," um, because what's sad is when Torvald was was you know outraged over what Nora had done with the forged signature. You know, he said some nasty things. He said, you're not fit to raise children. You're not fit um, to be um, to be my wife, basically. Um, and he said that you can stay in this house, but only for appearances. I don't want you to stay in this house um, to raise my children because you're a nasty woman. And Nora, that really hurts Nora because she took a lot of risks when he was sick to save Torvald. Right, she did a lot of things to save this marriage, and to, to because she really loved Torval, but Torval just saw her as a, as an object, as a toy, as a doll. Right, this this thing that he can parade around to show to society that he's made it, that he is um, the man of the hour. Right, and um, the play ends with with Nora denouncing motherhood, denouncing herself being a wife, being this um, subordinate being, being this um, submissive woman, right? And she said she's going to educate herself. She says that she's going to figure out the world by herself, and she is not going to let a man um, tell her who she is and how to think and how to behave. And, and this is quite interesting um, because this really breaks Nora from being this this doll, right? This this at first from the beginning of the novel to this point, she was just um, this thing on the mental piece, um, and now she's saying she's not a doll anymore. She's saying she's not going to be this trophy anymore. That she's going to be an actual human being, and that's pretty significant um, because she has always been a human being. It's Torvald and all of the other men in her life. It's never seen that she's an actual person, um, because she has an idea, she has ideas too. Torvald knows nothing about Nora, even though they've been married for eight years. He doesn't know anything about her. He doesn't know who she is, what her thoughts are, what she likes, and what she doesn't like, because she's always been 
doing what he wants, what he likes. So for these eight years, they've been living together. Nora knows um, him, but he doesn't know her. Um, so it's, it's really sad that he thinks that he's in a successful marriage, but in her mind, they've been broken for, for a while. Um, so that's really the play. I think it says a lot about women um, and, and where they've come from um, throughout time and how they've been um, subordinate um, to the opposite sex. Um, so it's really interesting on how um, this play runs out. Uh, because there's no happy ending. It's it's much, I would say it's a much better ending than a happy ending. Because, you know, we, we always uh, picture there, they'll be happy at the end and, and, you know, this happily ever after thing. Uh, but no, Nora wants to figure out the world for her own and through her own eyes, not through the eyes of men. So that's the summary, guys. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.